Hello, this is Watch All About with another watch review. And in this review, we are looking at the Wolf Exo. Now, Wolf is a company uh, based out of Singapore, but this is a Swiss made uh, timepiece. So, without further ado, let's start the unboxing process. So, we have this outside uh, bit of card with our Wolf embossed logo on the top of our box itself. Interesting little uh, detail there with a the grey sliver. Opening it up, uh, we have a certificate of authenticity for it being Swiss made, which is nice. And then a little warranty and manual, very nicely designed, but quite quite minimal. And as you can see, we have the Wolf logo at the top there with a little bit of a slip to keep that little tag here saying the price. And then of course, the watch itself. So without further ado, Let's consider the watch. So the case, uh, the box itself, the box is quite nice. I'm not sure if this is real leather or not. However, pretty nice size, nice and comfortable uh, as well. Let's have a look at the watch. <clears throat> so here we have the Wolf Exo. So the price is £535 or $698. So at first glance, you might think, oh, OK, this is a little bit pricey. However, let's not forget, it is a Swiss made skeleton. Now, Swiss made skeletons I always find to be pretty, pretty pricey. And, um, you know, so I, I actually think it's probably uh, on point for the price. Um, let's have a think about the specs then. If I just put it on my approximate seven inch wrist. It's obviously a dress watch. However, for a dress watch, the size is certainly modernized because it is 43 mil in diameter, has a height of 11.15 mil and a lug to lug length of 48 and a half mil. So um, definitely on the slightly larger side than you probably imagine. Usually watches styled in this way, you know, are about 40 mil. So definitely uh, larger than you'd expect uh, without a shadow of a doubt. 88 grams is the weight. So um, whilst it is a little bit larger, it's actually relatively easy to wear uh, because of the, the comfort of the weight, but also the um, contouring of the case is, is comfortable because the case itself is quite bulbous and quite curvaceous, as you can see there. So it is actually quite, it's weird, it's soft on the wrist. There's no sort of edges uh, and also, we'll discuss this later, but the, the crown itself is quite concealed, quite subtle as well. So it is a comfortable watch to wear despite its size. Five atmospheres or 50 meters water resistance. It's not worth getting wet. It is just a push-pull crown. So um, beware. Uh, you have a measure of protection if you do get it wet. Uh, but uh, yeah, just, uh, just don't go swimming with it. 22 mil lug width, uh, which is probably, again, slightly larger than you would expect, but it goes well with the size of the case. Uh, and uh, you get a two year warranty on this watch. However, the movement itself has 10 years warranty. Uh, so they employ you to register to be able to get that, um, to get that 10 year warranty on the movement, which is quite, you know, quite surprising really. I mean, I don't think many micro brands really offer that length of, um, uh, of warranty. So yeah, that's a, that's, pretty impressive from them. What is the movement, I hear you ask? Well, it is labeled the Wolf Caliber 02. Uh, now that's basically a modified Swiss Tech movement. Again, I hear you ask Swiss Tech, not really heard much about them. Well, yeah, I, I don't come across them very often. Swiss Tech are actually a Hong Kongese company. However, uh, so immediately the name Swiss Tech is a bit of a curveball. Uh, however, whilst they do offer Far East movements, they do primarily offer Swiss made movements. So um, it doesn't say for certain which movement it is. However, I, doing a bit of digging, I, I've determined, I believe it's the Swiss Tech S12-031. Uh, specs of that include the um, uh, beat rate of 21.6 thousand beats per hour. So that's six ticks per second, 42 hour power reserve, 24 joules, uh, hacking second hand, hand and automatic winding capabilities as well. Now, they've done quite a remarkable job with this movement because it is literally just a stock automatic movement. And yet they have rebuilt it to this standard. And, you know, we'll look at it in closer detail. But let me tell you now, they have done a very, very good job on it. It looks absolutely fantastic. 
every single angle um, you know the bridges are, are marvelously finished really good quality uh, even up close as well so they've done a lot of work to it um, and when you take into consideration you know that fact and the price is still slightly over 500 quid or slightly under 700 dollars you know all of a sudden puts it into perspective uh, so uh, yeah <coughs> So let's, uh, that's all the specs discussed. Let's have a think about the watch in closer detail, aspect by aspect. So starting off with the, I get this into, there we go. Starting off with the dial then. So obviously the main focus of the dial is this stripped back movement uh, with some uh, lovely, lovely skeletonized uh, bridges, etc. As you can see, um, it is sort of see-through for for a lot of it as well underneath the balance wheel uh, so that's a really nice visual it give, gives a really nice visual impression it's just great seeing all the move, movement seeing how it works in the background really really like that um, but in addition to this I really like what they've done around the outside as well because obviously the movement is only so big and it is a 43 mil size um, watch so they've they sort of introduced this outside ring which is multi-layered two layers the uh, in, inside layer has the uh, the minute track printed on it and it also has a, a nice um, uh, concentric circular pattern engraved on it as well and this top layer um, the the outer layer uh, has the hour markers um, applied to, to that as well and the hour markers again really nicely done they sort of uh, descend over the the second layer and go inside into uh, the, the space taken up by the dial so really lovely close attention to detail uh, and uh, the, the hands as well in a similar fashion now this uh, actually comes up to uh, my main fault with the watch and that is legibility um, yes it is a beautiful beautiful watch however if you are someone who struggles with your eyesight it's going to be rather difficult to read at a glance, especially in low light conditions, because the loom is pretty atrocious. You can't really trust the loom to do anything. Um, and obviously the hands, whilst they're really nicely manufactured and they're, they, they're a nice shape as well, they are fully polished and pitched and they just tend to merge a little bit into the dial itself, as you can see there. Certain angles it is readable. However, for the most part, um, at a glance, it can be a little bit difficult to read. So that's my that's really my, my main negative. The second hand has a nice little flash of blue to it as well, and an interesting ang uh, arrow pointing the opposite direction as the counterweight as well. So moving on to the case then, as I mentioned previously, it is a, a very nice sort of bulbous kind of shape to it. If I just show you like this, we have a a soft and gentle um, swing here out from the the case back uh, and it's just all you know quite bulgy <laughs> if you know what I mean uh, primarily brushed which again is brings more of a modern influence to the watch because uh, you know usually a skeletonized smart dress watch you'd expect more to be polished however the only polished uh, uh, facet of the entire watch is this um, top corner here of the lugs and along the side of the case so um i mean for me i think that's a good thing because it actually <coughs> will um uh it, it won't pick up scratches as easily moving on to the crown uh, so the wolf logo is nice and deeply uh, and accurately engraved there i mentioned previously as well it's actually quite slender uh, so it can be a little bit tricky to use um not necessarily to use to set the time, but use to, to wind. If you do like to give uh, your watches a little bit of hand winding, then it is a little bit on the small side of things. <clears throat> However, it's not unusable. Uh, finally, um, talking about the sapphire crystal, it is obviously sapphire crystal, but it has a really nice anti-reflective coating as well. Let me tell you, it's been an absolute joy uh, photographing this watch because the crystal is, is marvelous, uh, very clear. Um, you know, only if I, this is a window I'm talking about, so obviously, yeah, we're going to get uh, reflections there. <clears throat> so only if it's at, in a, something obvious like a window will you see exceptional amount of re reflections. Moving on to the case back. So quite a, a smooth, comfortable wear on your wrist, as you can see, matches the rest of the case, being quite gentle and curvy. 
and then we have a, a really nice um, you know thinking about the the movement again exhibition window in the case back and we have a customized if I can move this customized rotor on the movement as well you can see there the wolf logo so again you know a tremendous amount of detail uh, that is a, a brand new rotor that has been manufactured by wolf um, one thing I do appreciate about what Wolf have, have done, if you view uh, their website, there's loads of sections sort of like almost proving their authenticity. You know, you can download the certificate to prove that these watches are manufactured in Switzerland. You can download a report on the movement itself as well. So uh, they're certainly being very, very open and honest about everything, which I think is, is really good because it, it builds up a, a bit of trust because some people no doubt will be a little bit suspicious when they see that Ang on Wolf is a Singapore brand, Swiss Tech is a Hong Kongese brand and yet they're claiming that this is all completely Swiss made. It's good that they've made steps to sort of negate uh, that confusion or negate uh, people being untrustworthy about their claims. So yeah, uh, well on uh, to uh, Wolf for doing that. Right, let's get the macro lens on then. Oh no, phew, not yet, so let's uh, have a look at the strap. So the strap, um, I will say it's, it's an average strap, it's nothing outside of the ordinary. It's probably the only second thing that I'm a little bit disappointed in. Uh, not necessarily disappointed, I suppose, but it's not excited me. It is very, very plain. At least it's matte finish rather than a patent finish because I can't stand a patent finish. It is comfortable and fairly supple as well. And then we uh, look at the uh, butterfly clasp, pretty straightforward butterfly clasp with a fully brushed top bar to match the case and the wolf logo nice and deeply engraved on it as well. Okay, now let's have a look at it in close detail with the macro lens. So starting off with the dial, uh, naturally, as you can see here, we have the wolf logo uh, lightly engraved on one of these top bridges. And if we just continue moving around, you'll just see the the pretty uh, decent level of detail on this watch. You know, no uh, one thing that a skeletonized watches are very easy to make look cheap. And in this instance, I think they've done a really good job in actually making it look, you know, very, very well manufactured, very expensive. Uh, looking at the hands as well, uh, if I can get them in focus, you can see they're pitched, polished as well. Here's our, our hand. Moving around to the outside, so you can see there we have, um, sorry, concentric circular pattern on the outer edge, not the inner edge, but you can see there how the hour markers sort of transcend down both rims into the main section of the, of the dial as well. Pretty nicely manufactured there, as you can see. Very, very impressive. Uh, when you look at it up close, the amount of detail and the amount of work in uh, manufacturing this uh, this watch. So yeah, even up close, really nice, really nicely done. Uh, everything about it is pretty, pretty fantastic. Moving on to the case then, <clears throat> as I mentioned, it's all pretty much brushed apart from this one polished uh, shoulder along the, the lugs. Apart from that, nothing too uh, exciting really. I do like the, the bulbous curvaceous finish to it and moving over here's our crown with the wolf logo that's in deeply engraved on the end there so you can see there it's set inside the dial nicely so it jab doesn't jab into your wrist however it does make winding a little bit tricky then flipping it over into the case back so we've got some very specifics engraved around the outside nice and deeply done and then we have our movement. So you can see, if I move this, first of all, you can see sort of like the see-through section of the, if I wiggle my finger behind it, you, you can see the see-through aspect of the movement. And then our completely customized rotor with the Wolf logo. Uh, if I can get a decent shot of that. There we go. Nicely done, very, well manufactured, deep engraving, nice shape to it as well. And then finally moving on to the case, uh, onto the strap. I forgot to mention the strap has micro, uh, quick release pins as well, so nice and easy to replace if you do want to. And decent 
black stitching to match as well. And here's our top engraved bar with the wolf logo deeply engraved there. And the rest of the buckle fairly straightforward butterfly clasp, nothing too exciting to mention. All right. So the Wolf Exo uh, is certainly a really, really nicely made watch for the money. Yes, $700, 535 quid. You know, a, a glance is a lot of money. However, you know, when you consider alternative Swiss made decent skeleton watches, I think the price is actually on point. Um, especially when you consider that they've basically created their own skeletonized movement, you know, taking the Swiss tech uh, S12031 as a base and then completely rebuilding it. Certainly a unique watch, you know, you're not going to have another watch which looks exactly the same as, th as this because they, after all, you know, have, have done this themselves, which is a, a really good plus, uh, good plus point. And when you consider, you know, the amount of work that ha they've put into it, you know, it, the price point maybe is is quite reasonable, you know, when you properly think about it. Um, don't forget you get a 10-year warranty with the movement as well, which is pretty, pretty impressive. So, I think... I think skeleton watches certainly have a place in everybody's um, collection. They do provide something a little bit different. I, for one, really, really love seeing all the movement uh, and, uh, you know, mechanics behind the movement. So um, I really love watching it tick away. Uh, and I, I think that um, if you were to buy it, you would be impressed with the build quality as well. Because like I said earlier, it's very easy to make a skeleton watch look cheap and tacky. However, they've done a magnificent job in making it look very, very high quality and uh, very expensively uh, made as well. So um, really the only thing to keep in mind is the, the pretty average strap, however, you know, that's not necessarily negative. And also secondly, the legibility issue of the polished hands against the uh, very busy uh, and detailed skeletonized dials. So that's probably the only two things I wanted to raise with you guys. But apart from that, uh, a wonderfully made watch, uh, which is really solid in appearance, in manufacturing, in build quality as well. So they've done a really good job on it. So I do like it, the Wolf Exo. And uh, I'm sure that uh, you will too if you buy it. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and also comment your thoughts below as well. So this has been Watch All About, and this is the Wolf XO. See you next time. Bye-bye.